Hey, good evening. I don't know if you're um, popped in or not yet. I'm going to go check and see if uh, everything is working right from the other end. This is Live Life Whimsically, and I am Michelle, and um, Ballora will be in in a second. Uh, just want to see if we uh, are actually live yet on the other page. Tonight, we're going to talk about the um, Equal Rights Amendment. I'm going to have to give her a yeah, we're there. I'm going to have to give her a link again uh, to get her back in. But um, if you guys want to jump in. Oh, you're there? Yeah. But it's still not showing your face. No, that's okay. I'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, I mean, when I come over this weekend, we can um, we can play around with it a little bit. And yep. um, do you still have the notes from what I sent you? No. Do you want me to send them to you again, or do you care? No. Um, I'll just, you you can lead the conversation, and I'll just. Uh, Jump in whenever. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm going to, it, it is working over there um, on the on the Live Life Whimsically thing. So. That's good. I'm going to tell people that they can um, join the conversation if they want to. Um, so I, um, I had to do a lot of actual homework <laughs> to get ready for this because yes. I didn't, you know, you know, you think, you know, a lot about the equal rights amendment and then you, um, start yes. reading about it and you realize yeah. you don't, you don't know anything. And yeah. I think that especially from the time that it came, it came about it, which was like a hundred years ago, really. I think a lot of people think the equal rights amendment was just, you know, 50 years ago or whatever, but it's not. Um, people think that it's just about women and in particular white women and equal rights. The amendment is really the stepping stone for all people to have equal rights, not just women. And I think in the place we are right now, in the, in the climate, the current climate of not just our country, but the whole world, really, everything is sliding into a precarious place. And I watched a little bit of this documentary today when I was, uh, when I decided finally around 3.30, I was going to try to take a nap, which I never really did. Um, but I started watching the documentary called um, Unfit. And it was about Trump and how he got into office. And they actually talked about it almost in the same kind of cycles as when I listened to Unfucking the Republic. They talk about um, how every 10 years the government kind of reset sets the economy that every so many years, and I think it was 10, just like they were saying, or maybe it was 30, every 30, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But different kinds of cult of personalities come into the forefront and start shifting the way the world sees power. And so, you know, when Hitler came around, Mussolini came around and they all had that cult of personality and that each person, each p person that comes into power and wants to change things up. That's what they do. They do that particular kind of thing. They lie. They repeat the lie three times. And then they, um, they call somebody out as a, um, a as a scapegoat. So in, you know, back then it was the Jews because you needed somebody to blame for things when it went wrong. And just like now it's immigration in the United States and actually in other countries too, that are, are more Westernized than some of the places where communism and shit like that is going on. But it ultimately boiled down to this, these three psychologists or psychiatrists that and slash psychologists, cause they were both said that really what it is, is it's a basic human hardwiring and that we're not much more than the, the, the fucking monkeys we came from. And that when Jane Goodall watched these monkeys and showed us how they lived together. And oh, wasn't it great? They, they hung, hung out, they got along, they all took care of each other until the, the 
group of monkeys got too big and then they split off. And then ultimately one male chimpanzee would beat his chest and throw dirt around, which he did all the time when everybody lived together and everybody was like, ha ha funny. Yeah. But then this guy took off and all the male monkeys followed him. And then they beat to death the other male monkey in the other pack. And then they just like killed all the males in the pack and took the females. And that's basically what we're doing right now. And so we're in a place I feel like where we could just slide real easy into mm -hmm. theocracy and fascism if we didn't if we don't watch where we are. And I think the Equal Rights Amendment could or equal rights could go a long way in stopping that from yeah. happening. I just want to talk for a couple minutes here for anybody that watches this either now or later to cover what exactly we're talking about when we'd say, you know, the equal rights amendment, because a lot of people have a preconceived notion of what they think that amendment does or what it says. And most people are wrong because they've never read it. <laughs> and they think, you know, equal rights amendment, they think it's something new, like you already said, but they also think that it has to do with, um, you know, uh, race equality or something else like that, or that it has a lot of components to it. And essentially the Equal Rights Amendment just says that it would be an amendment to the Constitution which says the equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex, meaning gender. Um, you know, sex is a yep. older term that they used to use for gender. But they're, you know, um, the fact that this amendment was um, created in 1923 Yep. And 99 years later, it still has not been ratified and added to the Constitution. Really speaks volumes about the level of fear and oppression in this country. Because how can you say that guaranteeing that the government will not make laws that discriminate against you based on your gender male or female or in between but it doesn't say that it just says gender period yep if you don't agree with that the only reason that you have for not doing so is because you want to in some way use your advantage to oppress others it's the only legitimate reason. Otherwise, you would agree. Yes, I don't want the government making rules that could discriminate against me. Yep. And I think that that also people think that they'll lose some kind of rights because that's ultimately. Oh, look at that little join the conversation thing came up. That's cool. Um, yeah. The. Um, that they'll lose some rights. And I think that that's what, what yeah. a lot this of fundamentalist Christians do is to try to make you make people believe that if suddenly women or gays or whoever, you know, the flying spaghetti monster has more, has the well, same amount of rights, somehow they're going to lose theirs. That is exactly how they have um, repressed the bill again and again and again is because, um, fundamentalist Republican right-wing people have got up and set and twisted this very simple. Again, it's just exactly what I just said. It's a right that would guarantee that the U S government or state governments could not discriminate based on sex or gender. Right. And they have twisted that around in all kinds of ways to be about homosexuality, race, um, 
any other minority or fringe group that they could possibly come up with because they recognize that it is um, a way to open the doors for equality for all. Right. And really, basically, it wasn't even the Equal Rights Amendment that opened the doors for equality to be for everyone. It was the fucking Constitution. Because mm. when they said that we were um, given unalienable rights from our creator, that th those guys that wrote that Constitution didn't were never thinking about women. And they weren't thinking about the slaves they owned. But their own words ultimately made it so that everybody was eligible for those equal rights yes. but we just and so we've been basically if you really want to we say 100 years 99 years it's longer than that it's 250 years yeah because and and on top of that what you just said has also been used as an excuse not to pass it you know people will say oh well it already says you know we are all created equal and so we don't need that in there. Or we have other laws on the books that are anti-discrimination laws. So we don't need that in the Constitution. And they're wrong because laws can be changed very easily. But the Constitution is much more difficult to ratify yep. and change. Yep. So, you know, it is still very important to have that bill and that specific language passed so that finally we can say you can't make laws that would discriminate against anyone based on their gender no or anything else really because we're the, the whole po part of the constitution is that we're all created equally yes which is which is why you know the equal rights amendment as it is now started out with just that basic premise. And there are um, people that are, it says it hasn't passed that would like to update that to include, um, you know, things humans. like race. Yeah, yeah. Just humans, period yes. humans. And, and so the, the, so the, a little bit about the history of it, it, it originally passed in 1972 and, in order to make it become a part of, of the constitution, it needs to be ratified by three quarters of the states. And we got there. <laughs> the Virginia was the 38th state to ratify the ERA. Um, and it says that Congress proposed it in 1972, technically pushing the ERA across the threshold. And yet there are still hurdles in the ERA's path. The ratification deadlines that Congress set after it approved the amendment have have lapsed and five states have acted to rescind their prior approval. These raise important questions and now it's up to Congress, the courts and the American people to resolve them. And that right there, that one paragraph is so cotton pick and important and it's just the very beginning of of what we're going to talk about because it's who you vote for as your representatives and it's who you vote for as president because if the courts are going to have to decide this then the people that are sitting in those judiciary seats are very important uh, how they interpret the constitution and how they look at human beings as a whole and who matters and who doesn't is important. So we have a Supreme court that doesn't look at people equally anymore. And we have people in Congress who don't understand that the church should not make decisions about our laws and how people's rights are given to them or not so it's really kind of scary that we're sitting in this spot where we have to have congress help us and we have to have the courts help us when the courts were stacked while trump trump was in there with very conservative strange thinking people it's 
it's almost mind boggling to me that we've had half of the decisions we've had made by some of Trump's own appointees in just in regards to what he's pulled and January 6th and all of the stuff that he did, because they voted with the Constitution more times than not. We're very fortunate that that happened the way that it did. But I don't know that I feel that it will happen that way if left to Amy Coney Barrett and Kavanaugh to decide who matters and who doesn't. Because there are, there are actual women that aren't involved in any of it. They just believe in that 1950s idea of, of how life should be that would just give all their rights away because they think they would get more by doing that. Right. So 12 states have not ratified the Equal Rights Amendment. You, you want to want to kind of guess what those states might be? <laughs> or do you know them? Because <laughs> it was very eye opening to me to look at these states. Um, I know the ones that have revoked their ratification, which is just infuriating. I think I have that in there too. There's a, there's actually six, um, Nebraska, Tennessee, Idaho, <laughs> Kentucky, South Dakota, and North Dakota. I hate, I hate to even laugh at that because I shouldn't, it shouldn't be funny to me, but it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the 12 states that have not ratified the Equal Rights Amendment are Alabama, Arizona, which is very weird, but it is a Republican state, Arkansas. Florida, it's only a fucking bill. It hasn't even gotten very far yet in Florida. It's a bill. But we're a baby state, so I'll, I'll go with that. Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Utah. That doesn't surprise me at all either with Utah being very Mormon and very patriarchal in the way that they look at things. And I put a little note. I wrote this thing like two weeks ago, so I don't really remember what I said. So if it sounds stupid, I'm I'm just I'm really having to. And I didn't have time. I've been I actually have had to adult and work this week. I don't even want to think about that. But so I really haven't had time to look at this. So I said here that I believe that part of the problem for getting it ratified in all the states is the confusion surrounding what states have already ratified it and what the passing of the amendment would do once ratified. So people don't know what's going to happen if that happens. But now I'm going to amend that thought that I wrote. And I think that they know exactly what's going to happen. And that's why they don't want to do it. Because somebody's got to have somebody to dump on. We got to go back to the monkeys. There's always somebody's got to be able to beat their chest harder and louder and then get everybody to fall in line and make themselves feel better by being the top monkey, you know? And then it says, the version from 1972 went like this. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. The Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. Because old white dudes are worried that if they mess with what looks pretty but might have a penis will emasculate them. <laughs> that was my note. <laughs> it's sort of like... That person around the corner from you that has that jewelry store is very obsessed with penises. Most white dudes that write law, in my opinion, seem to have a problem with like keeping penis out of their mouth. <laughs> in the almost five decades that the amendment was introduced, it was brought up in Congress. The problem in getting it passed was that the majority of Congress was male. Between 1922 and 1970, only 10 women served in Congress. And now the ones that serve in Congress, you got a few that we have bastardized and made to seem like they're crazy and that they want to try to indoctrinate the whole planet into some kind of, I don't even know what they think is going to happen if we suddenly just let everybody have a fair shake and, and bite at the apple. Yeah. 
to uh, not to get too far off our, our path here, but um, have you happened to see any of the uh, ads running right now for Marco Rubio? Oh, gosh, yes. The ones about how he's, you know, hysterically screaming that the gays are going to get us. Yeah. No, I haven't seen that, but I've just seen him go after Val Demings a whole lot. Yeah. Well, that's part that's that's part of his um I mean, he rolls it into the Val Deming, Val Val Demings uh anti-campaign is he starts out by saying that, you know, the liberal agenda is saying that, you know, we want to turn all kids into drag queens. <laughs> Seriously, that is legitimately, I'm not <laughs> joking at all when I say that's what his ad is is trying to tell people. That we liberals, we liberals. want to want to turn all the kids into drag queens. And then he, you know, intersperses that commercial with a bunch of shots of, of like um like the drag queen story hour type of things that go on. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, that's what he, he is like, you know, doing the whole, okay, what group can we demonize today? Yeah. But it's, it's okay to watch, you know, cheerleaders at, at national football games, or it's okay for Trump to, you know, call women very derogatory names and, all of that's okay, right? And they can go to the beach and see people in thongs, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would imagine eventually they would come for that, too. But Marco Rubio hasn't answered his phone in, like, six years, so I don't know why anybody would fucking vote for him in the first place. I know, because I call him all the time, and he still doesn't answer his phone. Nobody does. He's afraid of you. They're all afraid of me. They're like, that bitch is crazy. She smokes weed against police cars and sheriffs are in courthouse parking lots and shit. So then it says when women, LGBTQI and POCs are not represented in that, in the, in the, um, in the amendment, Shirley Chisholm, and Martha Griffiths made passing the ERA a top legislative priority. However, they had to get rep Emanuel Seller, Democrat of New York to allow them to hold the, the hearings on it up to this point for 30 years, he had refused to allow the hearing. And then I said, see Mitch McConnell, who must have modeled himself after this fuck. <laughs> oh, I cracked my own self up. It's terrible. And so it passed in 1972 with more votes than it needed to get the two-third majority required by the Constitution. The states were sent the amendment with a seven-year deadline to ratify. So what happened? God. God happened. Within a year, within a year of 30, 30 of the 38 states needed for ratification of the amendment had done so. But the conservative leader, here we go, aligned with Phyllis Schlafly from her on on out from here on out and others like her will be referred to as the God Squad. So when you when I talk about Phyllis Schlafly and anybody else that was aligned with her, I'm gonna yeah as the God Squad. I, I just want to digress for just another second. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this is so this was so funny because when I was watching um some videos and uh, and Phyllis Phyllis Schlafly. Schlafly was in there. It showed clips from her in I in the 60s. Yep. And she was speaking to a group of people and she wa she was all proud of herself about how anti-woman she was mm -hmm. and walked out there and said to these people, the first thing she says to these people, I want to thank my husband for allowing oh, me yes. to come out tonight. And I just, I just was yep. like, Jesus fucking Christ. She what? literally came out there to do what she did as the antithesis of like Gloria Steinem. That yeah. was the whole reason why this woman came out. And I'm just going to tell you that when I was a born again Christian and I was going to the church, I loved her. I mm -hmm. thought that she was doing God's work and that she was trying to get us back in the home. I was convinced by this woman and pastors in my church that 
that the reason why wages were the way they were so low was because women had invaded the workforce. And if we would just go back home to the kitchen and take care of our children and our husbands, keep the house clean, you know, fuck the dude when he wanted you to fuck him and feed him and do all those things that then wages would get higher because more men could actually go out there and work. And that, that we were actually even prohibiting black men from finding good paying jobs because we women, all women were working where, where the men should have been allowed to be in there. And so when in the nineties, when I moved to Orlando with Jim and I became a housewife and was going to the church, I would take their voter guides and I would pass them out and I, I would put them in the church pews and I would do whatever I could to get people to vote conservative. So some of what's happening right now is partially my fault because I put some of these bitches in office. That's for sure I did. Um, but I did. I loved her. And I thought she was amazing. And I thought she was doing God's work. And I believed it completely. It's very yep. scary. Well, she is cited as one of the key players in why we do not have the Equal Rights Amendment Mm -hmm. it enacted already her and um the john birch society well i don't know him you don't know what the john the john birch society no john the john birch society is like uh it's a right-wing political advocacy group it's very um racist uh <laughs> yeah it's, it's very you know they they have a lot of history of um, racism, fundamentalism, and just, you know, crazy bullshit. They've been around for a long time. I'm surprised you've never heard of them. Never heard of them. But, but I, I can tell you that racism runs rampant in, in the church, especially in Bible-based churches. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And part of my waking up to what was happening in the church was watching certain groups of people especially in Orlando, because that's where I spent the, the vast majority of my time in the church, come into the church and be run out of the church. So we had a biker that came to the church in Orlando and he wore his colors and he wanted to be in the band and they let him play for a couple of times, but he just would refuse to wear anything other that's all I could think of is that it had to be the, the fact that he came in with this leather jacket on with his colors on his back, his blue jeans and his bass guitar. And he would go up there and he would play and he played maybe for a few Sundays and then he was gone. And yeah, he, I, was, I, he was too much for the pearl clutches. Yeah. And then we had black folks that came and they would be gone within a few weeks too, you know, cause we yeah. were in a very upper middle class white neighborhood in this assembly of God church. And, and we ran them off. So racism is very rampant in, in the church. And it's, and, and, I, and now that I'm a, a pagan, I, and just so y'all know, I'm an equal opportunity offender. It's rampant in our pagan community too. There's a lot of racism in the pagan community. There's a lot of, of um, homophobia in the, the pagan community. And there are some very, um, sexist, um, what do you call those guys? My brain is not working. Misogynistic dudes in the um, pagan community as well. So it's not just Christians. I think anywhere that we're two or more well, come together. That, that is, you know, sadly, and maybe somewhat cynically of me to say, but it, it was almost inevitable with the mainstreaming of paganism. Yeah. You know, when, when I first, you know, started my journey, my search for what, what the heck am I? There was still, I mean, I'm not old enough to be like at the start of that movement, of course, but it still was not very well known. There was no, know, not like it is today. No, the internet and, um, did that. And so, you know, when you have a smaller group, you tend to have more inclusion. 
And then as it grows, people start being assholes. <laughs> well, and that and the fact that that and we're going off topic a little bit, but the, the fact that we I think as a group, we pagan people as a group had ran mostly from some sort of Judeo Christian background. And for whatever reason, we were not happy with the way we were treated or we were cast out like the biker guy. And so, so we swung really hard to the other side and we let, we let people come into our group anybody didn't matter who they were it didn't matter if they were predatory it didn't matter we just let them in i mean just think about that fucking dude that bought the bra for kelly i mean it's just weird you know like why do we why do we put up with people that don't mesh well it's not and, and i'm not saying that we should run everybody out that doesn't agree with us and we live in an echo chamber but holy moly we, we i think we were just so desperate for for fellowship that we just cut our noses off to spider faces i guess so anyway the god squad <laughs> was afraid <laughs> of same-sex marriage the lgbtqia their rights gender and here it comes gender neutral bathrooms this is phyllis schlafly actually said these things these are things she cited yes she called Gen them unisex bathrooms back in the day but same thing yeah yeah well because that's that politically correct now and she didn't want women in the military so I'm going to tell you why that is, because I, I know this because I remember it when I read it. I think we talked about it when we talked about doing this particular episode. But they she did not want women in the military because women get a monthly cycle. And when they get their monthly cycle, they, they have PMS and then they're cranky and they're in pain and they're bleeding. And that should not happen in the military because we might kill people on accident that we wouldn't have killed if we were thinking clearly. <laughs> and that's why all the mass shooters are ladies that are on their period. Yes. And, and so many wars have been started by women. Yeah. By broads started over by broads, but maybe not started by them. So remember when they said women were too emotional for combat, R remind me who shoots up school. See, there it is. Shoots up schools, theaters, concert house, uh, concerts, houses of worship and yoga studios. Tell me who that is. Incels. That's who it is. I'm telling you right now. It's fucking dudes who can't get laid. Yeah. And they blame women you for that. Be, you should be much more afraid of sexually frustrated men than women on their period. For real. <laughs> this bitch was so successful that she was able to stop the progress of the ERA, even getting the GOP to go backwards, though the GOP was the first to endorse the ERA in 1940. See, before, Republicans were liberal. <laughs> It has kind of reversed. It has. It has. And the and Democrats were all the party of the Klan yeah. originally. It's crazy. So in 1977, Congress decides let's extend the deadline by three years because Congress can do whatever the fuck they want to. Since only 35 states had ratified the ERA, still no new states. And fucking 35 states. That's more than half. It should have just been over by then, you know? Mm -hmm. um, since only 35 states had ratified the ERA, still no new state signed on, and Nebraska, there you go, Tennessee, Idaho, Kentucky, and South Dakota voted to rescind their earlier support. Bravo, you fucks. By 1982, with the deadline come and gone, the ERA appeared to be dead, and most lawmakers had given up on reviving it, except one. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> she founded the ACLU Women's Rights Project. She successfully argued for equality under the 14th Amendment. A major provision of the 14th Amendment was to grant citizenship to all persons born or naturalized in the United States, thereby granting citizenship to formerly enslaved people. With all of that discrimination against women and others, and it still exists, where we see it, it, it is in wage equal inequality, sexual harassment and violence and unequal representation in the institutions of American democracy. So think that blacks are imprisoned way more than their white counterparts and that the same kinds of um, 
it's it's the it's the zip code of your birth it's the zip code of where you grow up it's that's how they can almost guarantee that they can tell what how a person's going to do by where they were born and it even if you threw tons more money into economically challenged areas unless you did something about wage inequality and the education of and and healthcare really because blacks are are predominantly more affected by lack of health care than, and even if they have insurance, they're, they're treated differently than their white counterparts. But because these people um, don't have the same opportunities, you throw money at the situation, but if somebody's having to work three jobs, they can't be home with their kid to help them with their homework. And if the three jobs they have is, you know, a janitor, a fast food operator, and a clerk at a, convenience store and there's nothing wrong with any of those jobs so don't think i'm dissing them they just don't pay those people a living wage at any one of those jobs otherwise they wouldn't need three but they're not educated either and so if all of the people in those economically um challenged neighborhoods um are all doing the same thing and out of their house then there's no one to mentor those kids. So all that that's happening in those places where they like to talk shit about Chicago all the time is that those kids don't have the opportunity or anybody to pull them into a situation where they can maybe better themselves and live better than their, their parents did. So, you know, who's helping those kids to go in and, and be mentored or maybe get you know, uh, internships, someplace where they could learn how to uh, go into politics, become an attorney, become a doctor, become, you know, something where they could actually make a living instead of, well, you know, I'm going to work those three jobs like my parents did. And then they're, mm -hmm. they're never home with their kids either. And you know, the, who's there to supervise the, it's just it's disgusting to me that yeah. like you can't like just break it down in your own head and go well, yeah well that's exactly how it would be because i know that when i grew up i was in a very economically challenged neighborhood as well both of my parents had to work but i was fortunate enough to be in a neighborhood where most of the mothers didn't have to so i wasn't running around the neighborhood acting like a lunatic and getting into trouble because there are other women that were there or men because there was one dad that didn't work all the time and he was home and his wife was, you know, waiting on tables and shit. So we were supervising people were helping us with our homework. And there were, there were, it was a German Catholic neighborhood with 85 other brothers and sisters. And so if I had trouble with my homework and my parents weren't home, I could go to the other kids in the neighborhood and get help. And even that wasn't enough to pull me up out of poverty, you know? Yeah. Not to uh, not to bring up your sordid conservative past okay. <laughs> too yeah. much, <laughs> but do you, I remember you saying a long time ago? You used to say, it, and I only remember it because you I, I heard you say it more than once. But that uh, that thing you used to say that was um, uh, the United States is a republic, not a democracy. Yeah the John Birch society is where that came from. Is that where I got that from? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh Lord God. Yeah. It's, there's a and lot they, of shit that needs to come out, you know? Yeah. We forgive you. <laughs> Thank you. If, if we went, we went out to witch box, we could probably find my essay, the pagan Republican one. Oh, I would God. like to revisit that and see what I think of it now, 20 years later. Yeah. Oh, I love gosh. you, but you're, you were obnoxious then. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> you know, and, and the thing that's really funny about it is that I'm really good friends with one person who, uh, uh, I mean, you really didn't say too much to me about it. You just kind of like, almost like petted me like a cat. Okay. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> this one dude that was in my coven when I was, when I first got with Fallon, uh, Rob Shanti, he was in. I remember Rob Shanti. Shining Wheel or whatever the heck that was, yes, that was. band. Okay. Yeah. So he would take time out of his day at least once a week to give me a call and just engage me in my politics. 
Uh-huh. And he came off as, yeah, that's cool, man. You know, I, I want to hear more about why you feel the way you do. And little by little, he just began to peel the layer, the layers mm-hmm. of the onion back until I, I would say things. And he would go, oh, wait, did you just hear what you just said? Do you, you really feel like that? Do you think because that would affect you, too? And, I, and, and sometimes it takes a minute for you to understand that if it's affecting you, that's when you can understand how it affects other people. Until finally, all of a sudden, I was like, OK, I don't think I'm Republican anymore. So we have Rob Shanti to thank for your yep. reform reformment. For real, we do. He is wow. the whole reason why. And he was very, very patient with me. And honestly, in groups, came and would people would come at me and he would tell them, knock it off, you know, just yeah. stop. She has a right to her opinion and you might not like it. And you know who else came to my to my um defense? Hmm. fucking Starhawk. Hmm. I know you don't, I know you have issues, but she said, you leave her alone. You know, we're not going to, we're not living in an echo chamber. We have to let her say her opinions. And then little by little, I finally came around. I mean, there was a reclaiming witchcraft group I was in and they wanted to throw me out like within five minutes. They were ready. Yeah. Just throw me the fuck out. And, and Starhawk was like, no, let her stay. Yeah. Well, those are the type of people, you know, Rob Shanti, Starhawk, that say, you know, that do that type of thing where they're like, no, you know, don't just automatically go on the attack. Don't automatically reject them because they know that it's sort of like brainwashing and you have to give that person time to get a over and around that however they can to start thinking clearly again yeah and if you and if you never give them the time or space to basically purge themselves of the poison you're never gonna get anybody away from it well that's also how the people at unfucking the republic are as well their Mm -hmm. motto is meeting people where they're at so you, you hear what they have to say, you find your common ground, and then you give them the liberal solution to their problem. Right. To make them understand, or not make them, but give them the tools to understand that you're on their side. Because if we're screaming at people, and I, and, and I was screaming at people, I'm not going to lie, they're, especially after Trump. And I think that's why the the unfuckers started saying the things they did because they didn't want us to start alienating people who felt bad for what they had done. And there are Republicans that do feel like shit. What did I do? You know, I thought I was doing the right thing, but I really put us in this place, this precipice of of bullshit that we're like our whole country could just implode and i'm i'm the reason well i'm not the only reason but i'm part of the reason why this is happening and so instead of instead of doing that i when people come into liberal groups that i'm a part of and say i did that i might be one of the only people that say yay we're so glad you're here at least i am and i'm glad you saw what happened and yes, you're welcome here and, and you can still be conservative. It's okay. Just as long, you know, just you see what happened and you know, with the danger signs of, of a, of a person who might come after him now and, and be that same person. I mean, DeSantis pops into my head, please God, don't vote for him. So, you know, but you can't scream at them and go, well, fuck you. It's your fault. And we hate you and get out. No, no. We need to meet them where they are and bring them in so that they don't feel like, well, fuck it. I'm just going right back to that mega crowd because at least they don't scream at me. You know, I'm sure they probably would a little bit because you left, but whatever. Yeah. So, and then it says in recent years, there has been a revival of women activism. We see examples in the women's March and hashtag me too. In 2018, a record number of women were elected to Congress and state legislatures. Also, lawmakers and women's advocacy groups have put the ERA back on the nation's agenda. So I just want to say the Women's March, I was so impressed with that after Trump got elected. 
until what happened in Iran and then women started doing what they were doing over there. We're a bunch of pussy ass bitches, man. We should have done so much more when he got elected besides putting on some stupid stocking cap and marching through the city. We should have done way more than what yeah. we did. We should have stopped everything. Every single one of those bras that walked in those streets all over the United States just said, nope, not going back to work. Mm -mm. We're not doing shit. Fuck all of y'all. Yeah. And we didn't. Well, our culture is also vastly different than theirs. You know, the, the, not to, Please don't anyone think I am minimizing anything that's going on in Iran right now because I've spoken out and said I 100% support those women and men over there that are fighting literally with their lives for equality. But their culture is different than ours. And is. there is more, more or less, there they have the opportunity to with with the with the huge amount of support that they have right now to actually make a change the women's march it really wasn't i mean it was a, a good way to build solidarity and start offshoots but it couldn't keep rolling because most of the people involved with it they had they had to go back to their jobs, their families, and you know, get on with life because as a society, we're at a point where you can't miss more than a day or two of work or you're no. gonna lose your house. Well, that's what they do. I mean, that's the whole point of it. That's why our our insurance for our medical care is tied to the job we have to keep you fucking stuck so you yes. can't do anything. That's why we vote on a Tuesday. Instead of yeah. on a fucking Saturday or over a, so many days of a week so that yeah. people that have to work at McDonald's and have a day off or whatever can go do what they have to do. They're not trying to make it easy on anybody. Social unrest and um, protest in this country is, you know, crippled because of our, our ties to how how pretty much everyone you know you know look to your right look to your left and you can point to somebody one paycheck away from disaster oh yeah and, I mean, and so we've made it so we can't afford to protest no we can't and, and it will only get it will only become different when we get to a point where we have nothing left to lose that's true that's true. Mm -hmm. And that's coming. I, I feel like I, I was talking, I don't remember who it was probably Gwen who sent me some stuff about what went down Fort Myers and showing me all of the devastation. Cause she's doing a lot of, she does the closed captioning for a lot of videos for different events and news and whatever. And she was sending me the pictures and showing me all the stuff. And that was the moment that I, I recognized that on top of the housing crisis that we have right now, that Florida is going to be devastated worse than the rest of the country is going to be devastated, but we'll, we'll rock the rest of the United States from the amount of financial catastrophe that's going to happen because of what happened down, down South. And, and so I think that's going to be the, the, the part where where it's going to start i mean they're going to they're going to do all kinds of shit just like they did during covid to try to keep us like propped up artificially and that's the other thing we're coming off of that pr artificially propped up covid thing and then add the, the storms and the, the the market is already changing and, and no matter what anybody says the, yeah the stock market makes the the world go round but real estate really does make the world go round and when that stuff starts happening, I think then that's that might level the playing field and not in a very nice way, but it's gonna level the playing field a lot because you're gonna you have so many displaced, I know I could hear her, it's so funny. Um, <laughs> displaced people, you know. I think I think a lot of people are gonna leave Florida, but I think a lot more are just gonna stand there going, Well, what are you guys gonna do? I mean, you gotta help us, right? They can't all just move from South Florida up to central and northern Florida and spread out. We don't have enough room for people. Pinellas County is maxed out. You yeah. know, there's nowhere for them to go. 
So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And hopefully, and I hate to sound like I'm excited for it, but I sort of am. I would like to see the fucking economy fall. I just crash, crash and burn. Because there's no good reason for everybody to be in this predicament that we're in. When if you go look at the records, uh, the financial statements of Kellogg's and Johnson and Johnson and see how the fuck good they did and Amazon and all of them and then see how many how much taxes they paid and see what they pay their fucking people and then come back and tell me how you have a problem with somebody getting food stamps when all we did was let these people make billions of dollars while people lost their jobs and businesses you know mm. I, I would like to just see it all crash and burn yeah I just want to tell people to, I know we're not quite ready to wrap up, but couldn't close, but yeah. uh, um, for anybody interested in how they can support or get involved or find out more about the Equal Rights Amendment and why it's important, um, there's equalrightsamendment.org and there's eracoalition.org. Awesome. There, I can put that in show notes too. Yeah, they're both uh, good websites to check out to if you have, um, you know, if you want ideas on how you can support the amendment or find out more about it. So in 2017, Nevada became the first state to ratify the ERA since 1972 and a new push to adopt the ERA began. And then in 2018, Illinois followed and ratified the amendment. This is our generation's chance to correct a longstanding wrong, argued Illinois State Rep. Steve Anderson, a Republican, who helped shepherd the measure. With each new ratification, there has been increased GOP support for the ERA. But questions remain. How does finally ratifying the ERA look? After all the original amendments language in 100, is it, after all the original, all the original amendments language is 100 years old. Brennan Center experts were among those to weigh in on the debate. Jennifer Weiss Wolf, the Brennan Center's Women in Democracy fellow, noted that the ERA would empower Congress to enforce gender equity through legislation and, more generally, the creation of a social framework to formally acknowledge systematic biases that permeate and often limit women's, women's daily experiences. I think the language needs to go farther. And this is me talking. I think the mm -hmm. language needs to go farther and include all humans, not just women. Among the lingering legal and policy inequities, the ERA would help rectify. She identified the emerging issue of menstrual equity as a legal and policy issue. The ERA could further refine and bolster. I don't know what that means. Menstrual equity. I should have looked that up. Brennan Center fellow Wilfred Codrington, also co-author of this piece, considered whether the ERA framed as an explicit permanent constitutional provision outlawing gen gender discrimination is sufficient to meet the challenge of in inequality today. Cordington says lawmakers are justified in adopting the ERA, even if it's uncertain that the amendment would fully achieve its advocates' desired ends. All of this, of course, equity, meaning the courts should just should judge based on everyone being the same in the eyes of the law. And I said, hello. Um, then so now the question remains, do we start where we left off or do we re rewrite the above um, the, the amendment? And I had said above my pay grade, but if I had to answer, I'd say keep going. Rewrite where it needs to be, but push it over the finish line. Because I think if they have to tear it all apart, then we're fucked. And we, I think going back to the beginning, no. You fix what you have to fix to be to, to go with the times, but you don't go, well, okay, let's just throw the baby out with the bathwater, which is a stupid expression. Well, just, just to, you know the the amendment is very very simple it's not a complicated it's, you know it's not like pages long like a lot of bills are it's yeah it's very to the point it basically just says 
equality shall not be denied by the United States or any state based on sex. So it would be very easy to just leave that last part off. You know, equality of rights under the law shall not be denied yes. or abridged by the United States or any state. Period. Yes. Not, you know, you can just chop off the on account of sex part. No person, regardless yes. of anything, of yes. any reason, should be yes. denied equality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It that, And then just make it make it a constitutional I amendment. mean, and anybody that disagrees with that, tell me, what in your mind makes it okay to deny another human being their right? Where's the line for, for that? Yep. What is what qualifications does a person have to have in your eyes to be considered equal or not equal? Exactly. And if you have, you know, if you have an answer to that question, where in your mind you think somebody is more or less equal based on something, you need to take some time and evaluate that. Yep. So what does it mean now that the VA voted, that Virginia voted to ratify the ERA? Does that mean that it will be adopted as a 28th Amendment to the Constitution? Evidently, there are two important questions that need to be answered before that's decided. Insert head explosion here. <laughs> First question, since the deadline Congress imposed 48 years ago lapsed, can they extend or waive that? It's currently being argued since the Congress set the deadline that they can waive the deadline, but white dudes. Senate Joint Resolution 6, a bipartisan measure sponsored by Senators Ben Cardin, Democrat of Maryland, and Lisa Murkowski, Republican of Arkansas, fuck that bitch, which is currently pending in Congress, seeks to do just that. But while the ERA's deadline was extended prior to the deadline, there is no precedent for waiving the deadline after its expiration. And that's when it'll have to go to the fucking Supreme Court. And those yuck, guys will just throw it right the heck out of there. Um, second, can bastard states rescind their support before the amendment actually passes? After the Civil War, Congress addressed the, the scenario when during the ratification of the 14th and 15th Amendments, each time Congress adopted a resolution declaring the amendments ratified, yeah, let's do this. But in 1980, a federal district court in Idaho ruled that the state's recession of the ERA was valid. Fuck their potatoes, too many carbs, stop buying their shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who will decide these questions? Under a 1984 law, the, the archivist of the United States is charged with issuing a formal certification after three quarters of the states have ratified an amendment. When there has been doubt over the validity of the amendment, Congress has acted to declare it valid. This occurred most recently in 1992 when the states ratified the 27th Amendment, 203 years after Congress proposed it. On January 8th, the Justice Department's official well, Office of Legal Counsel, OLC, issued an opinion arguing that the deadline set by the Congress is binding and that the ERA is no longer pending before the states. Notably, the opinion rejects the conclusion of the 1977 OLC opinion, which approved of the earlier extension of the ERA's ratification deadline. In response, the National Archives and Records Administration has said that the archivist of the United States, Daniel Ferrero, will not certify Virginia's ratification or add the ERA to the Constitution until a federal court issues an order. So there you go. They're going to get it right in front of the goddamn smaller courts, and it'll get argued all the way up to the Supreme Court, and fucking Clarence Thomas, Amy Coney Barrett, and Kavanaugh will say, no, that's not what we should be doing because it's already in there, like you said. That's exactly what's going to happen. We don't need this because it's already there. Ferrario had previously accepted the ratifications from both Nevada, Nevada and Illinois. But what would the courts, but would the courts have a say in this controversy? In a 1939 case, the Supreme Court ruled that the question of whether an amendment has been ratified in a reasonable period of time is a political question, best left in the hands of Congress, not the courts. I don't see much hope there either. If Congress acts to waive the deadline, would the courts continue to honor that precedent? 
how much weight would they give to the view of the American people who strongly support the ERA, according to recent polls? In sum, Virginia's vote to ratify the ERA has spurred an important legal and policy debate. However, the disputes over the amendment's validity are, are resolved. It is clear that the conversation around the ERA, an amendment that is already nearly a century in the making, is not likely to end in 2020. So, so some of this was borrowed from the article, The Equal Rights Amendment, explained by Alex Cohen, Wilford U. Cordington the, the third, published January 23rd, 2020. And I, I'll list the um, places I cited in the show notes. But... It's, it's super important and it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere right now. And especially not now, they're not doing anything right now because we have to vote in November. Mm -hmm. And so, so nothing's going to happen there. And then in two years, we're going to have to vote again in November. So nothing's going to happen then. And then in two years after that, we got to vote in November. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's effed up. And I, so I don't know, there's got to be a way Liberals need their overtaking of the capital moment without the violence, guns, and, you know, nooses and shit. We, the one thing you got to say about what happened on January 6th is they got everybody's fucking attention, didn't they? Mm. We don't do that. We're, we're just now getting to a place where Beto O'Rourke could tell somebody to go fuck himself. You know, like all of the, God bless the Obamas who did a lot and nothing at the same time. <laughs> so I, I the her saying when they go low, we go high. You, that didn't help anybody. Love you, girl. But no. Yeah. Well, you know, part of that and I, I'm just guessing here because I obviously don't know them and don't know what went on, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that when, uh, uh, you know, when Barack Obama was elected, there was a lot of talk surrounding them about how they had to present themselves to the American public in the least dangerous way possible. The, the most palatable to the, you know, middle-class white bread pub public um, so that they wouldn't be able to shove them in any type of, in, into any type of stereotype, you know, it's so that, fucked up because it doesn't matter. I mean, they still did. They still did. Just like they did, they, did. To, they did it to Jimmy Carter, too. You know, fucking he never got over being a peanut farmer the whole time. You know, never. Well, you probably don't remember because you were little, but I do. <laughs> and, and, yeah, it's fucked up. Like, we got to stop worrying about it. That is, you, we have to, what we have to remember is A, the United States is a country with a great philosophy in its head that was started by a bunch of racist people and built on hate. And that's where we still are. B, we don't have a fucking um, culture. There is no culture. What's the culture of the United States? Everything that we have, our music and our food has been ripped off by other, from other cultures. There's nothing about us that's original at all. But, and, and instead of, fucking hiding behind a facade of oh yeah this is us we're like the fucking we're the people that make shit happen why don't we just admit what we are so that we can move forward i mean that's what i learned in therapy the only way for me to fix myself was to admit the fact that i knew that a there was something not quite right going on inside my brain and b the way that i was treating people was fucking up my relationships and myself so it, DeSantis saying oh we're not going to talk about any of that stuff that doesn't fix anything. Oh, I mean, if you're expecting him to fix anything. No, I'm expecting everybody to want to fix something. I'm expecting everybody to stop thinking, oh, gosh, yep, I'm part of the problem, but I can't admit that. Yes. 
any kind of recovery is based on knowing what you were doing wrong in the first place. And of course, nobody was alive 200 years ago. Nobody was, you know, you might be related to people that own slaves. We're not saying you own slaves, but we have to admit that the country was built on the backs of people that were owned by other fucking people that we treated like dog shit, that we gave them land and, and said, okay, now that we've, yeah. we've set you free, we're going to give you this land. And then we had another white president come along and go, fuck that and take the land away from them. That those people were being hunted down even after they were freed and brought back to their slave owners. Come on. There's nothing wrong with admitting that we did those things. You didn't do them today. You weren't even alive when it happened, but it did happen. And we have to make up for it because that's the whole reason why we have to have somebody to dump on because everybody's got to feel better about themselves. And maybe we'd feel better about ourselves if we stopped dumping on everybody and every, help, helped each other to have a, ha a happy, decent life while we have the few short years on the fucking planet we get. Yeah. Speaking of that, yes. uh, I don't know if you've paid attention to recent things, but there was a bunch of, you know, conservative race of racist assholes, mm -hmm. as, as per usual, making a big stink about Lizzo playing James Madison's crystal flute. Like, what the fuck, people? Oh, and you know, a, like just a fucking slew of racist, racist comments about that, and. Okay, first of all, not one of those people can say they even knew this thing existed nope. before Lizzo played it. I guarantee nope. you not one of nope. them knew it even existed. Nope. And not only that, but James Madison didn't give a shit about that flute. It was in a drawer. <laughs> and when and when the when the White House was burning and Dolly Madison was credited with saving a bunch of shit. Yeah. A bunch of artifacts of American history. Yeah. You know how she did that? How? She told slaves to go into a burning building and get that shit. Yes, she did. She didn't go in there and get that shit. Yeah. So the fact that that fucking crystal flute even exists at this point in history is because some poor black person that was enslaved by a white person was ordered to go into a burning fucking building and get that fucking thing. Dude, everything. So take your racist comments and shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up because everything, your music, your food, all of it came from someplace else, probably from black people. I mean, my mother thought that that Greeks came up with cooking okra. A, there's no okra in Greece. B, <laughs> Well, there's not. So some maid had to have taught it to some white Greek lady that was cleaning for her somewhere along the line in St. Louis. And that's where my mother got the goddamn recipe. Yeah. So, so yep, that ends that shit, guys. Thanks for stopping by, even though you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to end the broadcast so I can talk about dinner with Michelle, and next week you'll have to just figure out what we're going to talk about. And since you don't show up for this, we're not telling you what it is. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs>